Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I took this setup and I'm turning it into this. That's right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this pergola. So let's get to that, let's go. My friend Taylor reached out to me saying she wanted to build a pergola in her backyard. And so here is the design that she came up with. She wants the pergola to have six posts. And to do that, we'll also have to extend the deck out four feet. The top will have two by 12 spanning long ways and then two by sixes sitting on top of those. We will then infill the middle of those two by sixes with two by sixes spanning the opposite direction just to start creating the base for the slats. And so you can kind of see here that the slats will run perpendicular to each other. And now in this corner over here, we'll also be installing some slats just for additional privacy from her neighbors. Okay, so this pergola is going to be 16 by 12. Um, 16 spanning this way and 12 feet spanning this way. To do that, we're gonna actually have to grow the deck out as well. There'll be a four foot add on this end and there'll be a gap of about a foot and a half from the fence to the pergola. Now being that she lives in this part of town, local code allows us to build up to the fence line. So we're good on that part. She just wants a little bit of a gap on the back end but always make sure that you're verifying your setback limits on your property. That's important. So let's start marking out the post location and then we'll start digging the holes. Let's get to that. So first thing is I'm gonna take this piece of deck off this section so that I can understand how much I need to come in because I don't know exactly where the framing is. So I'm gonna take a couple of these pieces off. First identify the post location over here um, and then do the same thing over there and then transfer it all the way around the corner. So let's do that. So a couple of things you're gonna need to actually get started. Um, you're gonna need some stakes, at least to mark the corners. The good thing is the deck is already built so I can just add on from that to keep it square and consistent. Probably don't really need these, but we'll still use them just in case I actually need to identify where exactly it goes, but let's start marking them. Okay, here's the view from this angle. So the post on this side will be on the outside face of this two by, simply because if I move it in, it'll sort of encroach into the door right away. So you don't want that. You wanna make sure you have enough clearance because in case you can't get anything out to the front, you can get out to the back. And so we'll have the post out here, but let's get going. Just as a rule of thumb, if you're gonna be doing any digging, make sure you call 811. Uh, it's better to find out where your utilities are at before you do any digging. Um, the last thing you want is to have some sort of gas, gas leak or electrical spark because you didn't do your due diligence by checking where your utilities were at. In this instance, we found it from the survey, so we're, we're in pretty good shape and we know exactly where, the, where these uh, utilities are at. Now that I have these posts marked and that side as well, what I'm going to do is measure over on the extension of the deck just to give me a baseline to start off. So I know it's gonna be four feet. So I'm just gonna mark here, four feet. And then the post will obviously be somewhere around here. So I'll measure that shortly, but that's my dimension there. And then over here, same thing, four feet. That's my edge of deck. So I know the post is there. So I know I'm gonna run a little string line or actually I can just do this since it's pretty much a ballpark area. It'll be around here somewhere. So again, it's easy whenever you have a deck already built, but if you don't have a deck, you wanna use the stakes. And that way it's easier for you to determine where the posts are gonna go. So that's where that was gonna go. And then gonna be inside. Center line is seven and a half inches, go around here. So I'll dig right there. One thing to make sure of is when you're doing these posts, get the same dimension from the edge. Um, whatever you're gonna have here, you're gonna have over there. So in this instance, I'm gonna have uh, six inches from the edge of the deck. And so that'll be the face of this. And then same thing over there. So let's get going on that. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm cutting three inch strips out of this sonotube piece that I have left over from a previous project. And I am using the, the strips on top of the posts support just like that it'll just give it a nice flush look on top that way I have consistency on the support itself and there's not going to be any 
uneven surfaces this just helps it out so i'm doing that for all six of these as soon as i cut them all i'll start placing concrete so that's the next step let's get going on that okay guys here we go first bag Okay, so there you have it guys. The foundation is now complete. I'm gonna let these dry overnight and then I'll come back tomorrow and start on the actual post and the framing installation. But just to recap, the foundations were two and a half feet deep by eight inches wide. And that ended up being uh, 10 80 pound bags. So I did have a little bit left over, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and throw the excess out. But that's it for the foundation. I'm gonna just go ahead and finish off the top. Make sure it has a nice smooth finish for the bracket to be installed. And then we'll keep it going tomorrow. Let's go. Okay guys, so here we are, day two of the build. We've got all the lumber in the backyard. It was a pain to get it all back here. Don't ask me how I did it. But I got it all back here and now it's ready to be installed. The goal for today is to actually get the framing extended out and the posts installed, and then we'll lay across the two by 12s and the two by sixes. Um, so that's the goal for today. Let's get to it, let's go. Okay, so to start off, what I'm gonna do is run a two by six on this existing two by six. So it'll be sistered on, and then I will run across uh, two by six by four feet uh, that way that'll be the new extension of the deck. Let's get going on that. Let's do that Okay guys, so the first piece was cut at 46 and a half that way the end of it is going to be four feet um, so That's because the end piece will go like this That'll be four feet extended out. So and then the other end piece over there will be at 46 and a half So let's get going on that Okay, so to hold it up, I'm actually using a small little three inch strip. That'll give me some guidance as far as like how to infill this section out. So I'm doing this first, uh, and then I'm gonna add this piece, and then I'm gonna add two additional pieces here. You gotta keep in mind that the deck boards run this way, therefore the support space needs to be like this. So always a rule of thumb on that. So let's keep going, add that piece over there, and then we'll start framing in the inside. So what I'm doing now is I'm establishing the elevation of these. Um, and to do that, I'm using a little laser here and measure the existing elevation. Gotta set this back a little bit. If I measure the existing elevation, I am at eight and a half. So that means that the bottom of this end also needs to be at eight and a half. Um, you could lower this down a little bit more just for some drainage purposes, but since it has gaps, it'll drain right underneath it. So this is currently at eight and a half so we're actually good on this and we're just going to dig down a little bit and add some peat gravel and we'll keep this where it's currently at we'll do the same thing for all the other uh, blocks uh, just to make sure they're established at the right elevation and then uh, we'll add a piece across and then add a piece across and then move on to the next step so these come in handy um, for almost every little thing so if you don't have a laser you would have you can use a four foot level um, that'll also work out fine but these come in handy for a lot of different projects and saves a lot of time so highly recommend um, a level laser Okay, so the blocks are now set. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna run a two by six across here and attach it to that piece, this piece, and do the same thing over here going across that way. And then I'll attach the outside face and then I'll infill another two by six across and then we'll do some intermediate blocking. So that's the next step. Let's get going on that and then we'll get going on the posts. Okay. 
Okay, so another way to check if it's square before you even want to continue a lot of the framing is go across two corners. So I measure, I'm measuring 187 and a half. So you want to do the same this way, going across to the other corner. And I have 187 and a half, so they're both. So now that they're now that the framing is complete, I think uh, now it's time to start working vertically. Okay, so I'm getting ready to install the, the base support. So that's the next step. Uh, so I am using some Simpson brackets to get these installed. I have all my locations marked and I'm using some wedge anchors. Uh, these are five and a half inch by half inch diameter. So I'll drill that with my rotary hammer uh, and then we'll start, we'll start setting the first post. So let's get going. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm measuring the distance from here to the bracket. And so that is nine and a half. And so my client, she's standing over there. You can't see her, but my client wants this to be eight feet tall. There she is right there. Eight feet tall. So eight feet plus this is nine and a half. So I got to make this at eight foot nine and a half. Um, that's to the bottom side of the two by 12. And then I also have to bring it up this distance, which is an additional 11 inches. And so eight feet plus nine and a half plus 11 inches is the post size. We're gonna repeat that for all six and then start bringing them up. So let's go. Perfect, perf, perf, perfect. All right, now what I'm gonna do is again, fill in with blocking and that'll give it more support. So let's do that. So I'm gonna measure this now. It's 11 and a quarter, 11 and a quarter. All right, so now this is, these are the blocking pieces. These help for additional support, so. Five and thirteen sixteenths. Perfect. See, now I'm going to hammer in these uh, carriage bolts, right? I got some half inch washers, half inch nuts. These ain't going nowhere. Just tighten them down. There you go. Last one. Let's see how it does. Okay, 
now I'm gonna get the lag bolts in and then we'll go into the next phase okay so now what I'm gonna start doing is I'm starting to frame the top pieces and so since I'm by myself I'm gonna make myself a little template and screw it onto that end and then as I, as I lift the, the beam up uh, or the 2x12 up it'll just slide in place and then I'll just screw it on one end so let's get going on that my templates are now installed I have one holding the actual 2x4 over there with this with the second piece so that it doesn't pop out and then on this side it's just a little ledge so it can so I don't have to carry the load the entire time so that's something you can do as well if you're working by yourself um, other times you can just carry the load and just nail it in place but uh, that's what I'm doing since I don't want to carry the load the entire time so let's uh, let's bring this 2x12 in place and let's screw it in and let's keep it going let's put it in place so you want to be careful when you do this if you're by yourself obviously um, you want help but if you don't have help and you want to champion it yourself like I am obviously just be very careful first thing you want to do is bring it up like this see that's gonna hold it there and then you want to bring up this side and just set it there but before you do anything make sure you have some screws with you um, to temporarily hold it so I got some nice black screws I'll, sh I'll put the link down in the description you already know I'll leave these up there let's uh let's bring it up see that side's gonna slide right down and then this side is gonna sit right on that and then that's when I'll screw it in see how I just slid down there you go plus all the way around and then you just screw it in so let's so we'll say three six nine and then this way, same thing. Three, three, three. Three, two. Take this stuff down, because the moment you move the ladder, this is gonna fall right on your head. There you go. Three, evenly centered. Now let's go do the other side. There you have it. So that's how you get a piece up there by yourself. Uh, again, if you're gonna have some help, don't do not do this. You can avoid this by just having some friends over and just doing it yourself. But um, I just wanted to do this by myself so I can show you that it can be done by yourself if you don't have any help with just a little bit of uh, innovation by using some, some supports like that. So that's what we got. Now let's keep going with the next ones and then uh, we'll call it a day. Let's keep it going. So now we're going to start setting the two by sixes across and there's going to be five of them and so they're going to be spaced out around three and a half feet each and so we'll get going on that so let's get to it okay let's put the first piece up Okay, so 
now that the entire perimeter is framed now what i'm going to do is just infill three two by six by twelves across so now that we got the intermediate pieces cut we're going to start setting those in place now the spacing between all of them is going to be three foot nine and a half so we'll get going on that install it and then we'll call it a day let's go Okay guys, so there you have it for day two of the build. Today consisted of framing out the bottom, putting the post up, running the 2x12s and also the 2x6s going across. We're going to come back another day and actually finish off the 2x6s going down the middle and then we'll finish off the top of it uh, with some slats and then that'll kind of give it that final look. So there you have it for today's build. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up and then we'll see you guys again tomorrow. Let's go. Okay, so before we go any further, I wanted to walk you through the framing of the deck. Uh, my friend Taylor actually completed this throughout the week. Uh, she's very handy as well, so we figured this was the best time to do it before we moved any further and installing the slats. That way you have a good uh, surface to work on. But to summarize, we ended up using 2x6s spanning the long ways to support the deck itself, and then we infilled it with blocking spaced at 2 feet on center. So this just provides that support, um, that way you can move forward and start starting your decking. And so here we are uh, prepping for the slat installation. Uh, Taylor and I were tag teaming this one together. Um, she was cutting the pieces as I was installing them. Um, but to start off, I measured each bay dimension and she just cut them to size. The original design had six slats per bay, but after we mocked it up, we realized it was not enough shade for the area. And so we doubled them up um, at each bay and so we had to run to the store to get additional slats but it's definitely worth it um, if you want that shade during the summertime. To get the center line of the slats I first measured the dimension of each bay and then I divided that by two and then marked that line on both ends. I then went three inches to each side and then I used a little piece of slat as a template to mark the edges of them as you see here. And here's an updated look from the top. Now let's get going on the rest of the slats. Okay guys, here we are. Um, we've actually finished the slats. Overall, it's looking really good. Today, we're gonna go ahead and finish the slats on the base. Okay. So I'm installing the last screw now. And I think that's it. Woo! Let's go. Look at it. We got it done. Now we got to clean up. So we're gonna <laughs> clean all this stuff out of the way. We obviously gotta wait for the, the treated material to dry out before we stain it, but there it is, that's the finished product. So there you have it guys, that's it for this build. Hopefully you guys find this video helpful. We'll catch you guys on the next one.